Today's question is simply, could this and this make for the best home poured stout in the world? Now I appreciate that might seem like quite a bold statement, but trust me, I reviewed this in a video last week and I'll be honest, mind-blowing stuff. I already really enjoyed the core stout that goes into this, but this from Blue Monkey there, Gorilla Nitro English Stout is just, well, it's just a level up on pretty much any other nitro stout I've ever had. Sure, there are other craft nitro stouts that certainly deliver as much flavor, maybe even potentially more, but as a balanced, refined package that gets you that thing you want quintessentially well, from a Guinness, along with a handful of just extraness, extra quality, extra everything, there really isn't anything better in my opinion. And today we're gonna to see if we can step that up by putting it through the Guinness Nitro Surge device. This basically agitates the nitro in the beer as it pours in. You can buy special Guinness cans to use this. I've done loads of videos on it if you wanna know more, but in theory, you should get the best possible result for nitrogen flush beer with the Guinness Nitro Surge when you're pouring at home. However, these cans are designed to be used on their own. So when you open them, all the nitrogen gets excited, it starts activating in the beer, and then you get it in the can as quickly as possible. With the Guinness Nitro Surge, well, it's a bit more, I guess, a slow and considered process. The first thing we need to do though is to stop the nitrogen getting all excited in this can when we open it. And to do that, we're gonna do something called the pin method. Now, again, I have done an entire video on the pin method with a can of, I think it was O'Hara's Nitro Stout. So there'll be a link somewhere in one of the corners if you wanna go and check that out. But basically, a really quick rundown is, I'm gonna insert a pin into the top of the can to try and very slowly release the nitrogen that's kind of, I guess, in the top of the beer, in top of the can rather, leaving the nitrogen that's actually mixed in with the beer intact so that when we open it, there's no nothing exciting happens, put it through the device, gets activated then, pour it into a glass, and away we go. Right then, I'll speed this bit up because it is a bit slow and laborious, but pin prick in the top, carefully ease it out and let the gas out over kind of a few minutes. The trickiest part though with these little flexi pins is getting them into the can. It would definitely be easier with something like a uh, like a thumbtack. We have success. You only need to pierce it a tiny amount. You don't need to get the pin all the way in there. And all I'm doing now is holding the pin lightly so that it doesn't shoot out but lets a bit of gas out every time. You can probably hear that. And another trick I figured out is, actually, it's probably a lot easier to put the pin down, keep your finger over it, and just let a little bit of pressure off rather than trying to hold a fiddly little pin. Now we wait. Okay, not too much in the top of these ones. Blue Monkey tend to fill their cans quite high, which means there's just not that much gas in the top of them anyway, which is very convenient for this purpose. So, Get your glass at the ready, and now we're just going to open the can, stick the Nitro Surge on it, turn the Nitro Surge on, and I'm not going to do a two-part pour in this because, well, the can's not going to fill the glass because it's not a pint can, so we're just going to get all of it out there in one, basically. Careful on the open. That's very good. Nothing excited there at all, which is great. Now we line the device up with the can, stick it on. And now, I guess it's just the moment of truth. And now, just sit back and watch that do its thing, because that is a glorious sight. Okay then, we've just about settled down and despite my glass being quite dirty, um, yeah, don't let your other halves clean your glassware apparently because that doesn't go very well, uh, but if I go to the clean side of the glass, <laughs> that looks like an absolutely glorious pint and I don't know if you can see the head on it, but it's soft, silky, I could spot maybe two bubbles in there, maybe three at a push, but yeah, it looks fantastic and the visual appeal is better at the Nitro Series than it was at the can on its own, which is 
a great thumbs up, but we need to find out, does it taste any better? And well, there's only one way to do that really. I'm gonna go out on a whim and say the aromas aren't gonna be too strong on this. They weren't that intense on just the can pour that I did because well, nitro takes away some of that intensity, but also when you're left with a nice, big, thick, creamy head on a beer, it kind of protects the beer and well, blocks you basically from getting some of those aromas. But yeah, it's kind of the same as it was before, maybe even more subdued because the head is a little bit thicker and creamier on this one by the look of it. But, you know, I'm feeling good about this. I think it's going to be a good one. So let's get into it, shall we? Cheers. What do you get to attach? That is not a bad glass of beer at all, I have to say. It's... um insanely creamy really i mean it is just milk however and this is the first time i've said this i don't think the nitro surge has benefited this actually the body is a bit better and the head and the creaminess and the texture and everything else is just that bit more activated but i don't know what it is about the nitro surge unit with this beer but it has enhanced some of those slightly more bitter, kind of almost metallic, minerally qualities that all stouts have pretty much. Um, but this stout generally doesn't have a huge abundance of them. Certainly didn't in the single can pour that I did. Yet in this one, it's just maybe not quite, well, just not quite the dynamic taste experience it was from my previous one. Obviously, there could be slight differences per can, but I really don't think that's it. Um, but actually, a few sips in now, kind of nearly halfway down the glass, and it's starting to come back again. That lovely, rich chocolate, raisin, biscuit, toffee, all of those kind of core big flavours that the original Gorilla Stout had are starting to creep back in now. Say, so I don't know what it was, don't know why. Maybe it was just because there was too much head on it, and that, you know, starts to change the profile of a beer when you're tasting just too much of that thick foam on top, but. It's certainly not a bad one. So really, that's kind of it. There's not really a lot more to say about it. I reviewed this beer in full last week. So again, link, uh, I think it's up that way if you want to watch that. Um, strongly recommend it. It's the best canned nitro stout I've had ever. So it's still a massive thumbs up. But if you sat there going, oh, should I get that and get a nitro surge to use with it? No, nah, I wouldn't bother. I probably won't be putting the rest of my cans through it. And um, while I won't say this one's been ruined, it's... It's not unpleasant, it's just different and maybe just takes away a bit of that quality Blue Monkey Gorilla character that I personally am looking for when drinking anything with their name on it. So, hey, uh, I'm sure others will love it through this, but for me, it's just not quite there. But that said, we're talking about just minor inconveniences here. It's still a fantastic pint. I want to go away and enjoy it. And that really is everything. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you'll be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.